sometimes plans start being very economically driven and then they end up being you know more holistic than that if I may use that word China could actually have thought about its brand plan as a way to counterbalance you know other more tariff like uh, projects such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership as a way to create trade gains based on reduction in transportation costs rather than on, on tariff barriers being dismantled. And if you think about how it's gone so far with, you know, the big investments in Pakistan, say, you know, uh, and then, you know, India's reaction to that, and India being out of the Belt and Road, for example. I mean, you can, you can see how China is carving out that security area in the very same way as, as you know, the U.S. did with the Marshall Plan, opposing the Soviet uh, um, uh, Soviet uh, uh, potential risk for for Western Europe. On the Marshall Plan, uh, one more thing is that. We tend to forget that one of the key things that uh, the U.S. pushed for there was a payment system. I mean, a, 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 the refunctioning I mean, of a payment system that would be a, a multilateral or you know cross-border, um, and which was the origin, by the way, of, uh, of literally European Union and, and European Monetary Union. And that could be compared with China's push for the use of the RMB on the Belt and Road. And you know China's push for a payment system that comes. Uh, I mean, China's payment system being used uh, by the rest of the world, as opposed to SWIFT or, or, or others. So, so I think there are some parallels there that that are interesting, that are not yet proven, but that we should be aware of. Mm -hmm.